We've worked with a number of cities, states, provinces, and organizations across North America and beyond. And Washington, D.C. is one of those. The first step when working with any organization or city is to ask them, what matters to you? Because climate change, though it's a global issue, it affects all of us differently. And nine times out of 10, it's not creating a new issue that we've never seen before. It's taking an issue that we already are challenged by today and it's exacerbating it or making it worse. So in other words, if you're working with a landlocked city like Chicago, which we did a number of years ago, they're not really concerned about hurricanes. They're concerned about water levels in the Great Lakes. If you're working with the city of Houston, as we are right now, they are very concerned about hurricanes as well as extreme precipitation and storms. If you're working with the city of Washington, D.C., so the first thing we did was we asked them, what are you already concerned about? What has already challenged your systems? And they had a number of heat wave events and a number of heavy precipitation events, a very intense precipitation that already concern them today. We know that climate change is altering the risk of both of those types of events. So step one was to identify what they were concerned about. Then step two is to develop the specific projections for the future. And part of that um, includes learning which weather stations they typically depend on for their information. Because if you develop, you know, region-wide information, but they're used to using certain weather stations um, as part of their planning or operations, then you might end up with a mismatch in the information. So finding out where they use their information, what were the events that really impacted them, developing what we call climate indicators that are relevant specifically to Washington, D.C., their needs, their interests, and then providing that information to the city so that it could be used for everything from future planning to operations and maintenance to the design of new systems to informing climate mitigation as well. Because if we know that the range of future change depends on our choices, then knowing that the upper end of the range might be very costly and expensive and even impossible to adapt to versus the lower end of the range being adaptable, that actually informs and motivates our mitigation so that we can do our part and we can communicate to others that we have to reduce our carbon emissions or else we won't be able to cope with the changes that are coming.